Tonight's lesson is Lesson 7.2, Write Fractions as Sums. Our essential question is, how can you write a fraction as a sum of fractions with the same denominator? Please make sure that you are on page 135 of your Go Math book, and let's get started. Okay, let's look at number one. Number one says, write the fraction of a as a sum of unit fractions. So if we look at our fraction models here, we see that we have four fifths. That's what my model is showing me because I have five equal pieces and I have four of those pieces shaded in. So I have four fifths. Well, if I wanna write it as a sum of unit fractions, that just means that I'm going to break it up into different fraction amounts and make it into an addition problem. So what they did up here was they said, well, four fifths is also the same as saying one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth well, that equals four fifths also. So I just broke it up into a different fraction amount. So I called this one fifth, this was one fifth, we have one fifth and one fifth. And if I add them all together, that equals four fifths. You can also look at it in a different way. You can say, well, if I have four fifths, what's another way that I can make four fifths? Well, I can take this two fifths and I can say two fifths plus another two fifths. Well, that would equal four fifths also. So I could have written it like that. Another possibility could have been one fifth plus three fifths equals four fifths. So as long as we get to four fifths, we have the right answer. Okay, let's look at number two. I have three eighths for my fraction, and then I have my model for three eighths also. I know that this is three eighths because I have my fraction bar is broken up into eight equal pieces, and three of them are shaded. So I wanna break this up into a sum of unit fractions. So I wanna make it into an addition problem showing the answer will be three eighths. So what I can do is I can break up each of my pieces and call it one eighth. So if I have each piece is one eighth, then I can turn it into an addition problem. So I can say, well, three eighths equals one eighth plus one eighth plus another one eighth. I know that that equals three eighths. Now, there's another way that you could look at it also we can make this a an addition problem by saying, well, I can say that this is 2 eighths plus 1 eighth, and that also equals 3 eighths. So there was two different possibilities there that you could have done. Okay, let's look at number three in your Go Math book. It's showing me that I have 6 twelfths here. And I know that it's 6 twelfths because I have 6 shaded out of 12. 6 twelfths is also equal to 1 half because 6 is half of 12 and I have 1 half shaded. So now we need to write 6 twelfths as a sum of fractions. Well, one way I can do it is break it up into unit fractions. So I can call each one of these pieces 1 twelfth. So if I broke it up into 1 twelfths, each piece is worth 1 twelfth. And if I add up 1 twelfth six times, 1 twelfth plus 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 1 twelfth, that would equal 6 twelfths. Now you could also be thinking of another possibility. I could say that I could have 3 twelfths plus another 3 twelfths and that would also equal 6 twelfths. Another possibility could be 2 twelfths plus 4 twelfths. That also equals 6 twelfths. 
So there are different ways that you can get to 6 twelfths and there are different ways that you can write it as a sum of fractions. Okay, here's number four in your Go Math book, and we're going to look at, num at four fourths, and we're going to look at the model for four fourths. What I want you to do is I want you to write down a few possibilities that you could do to write four fourths as a sum of fractions, just like we did on the last problems. So go ahead, pause the video, work out some problems, and press play when you're ready to check them. Okay, here are a few different possibilities that you could have had. So, of course, I broke it up into unit fractions. I called each part one-fourth, and I just added one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth. Well, that's four-fourths. My next option was two-fourths, which is also a half, plus two-fourths equals four-fourths, which is giving me a whole. Then I said three-fourths plus one-fourth equals four-fourths. So those are the different possibilities that you could have had. Let's go on to number five. All right, number five is asking me to write the fraction as a sum of fractions three different ways. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at seven-tenths and I want you to write it as a sum of fractions three different ways, just like we did on the last slide. So go ahead, pause the video, work this out, and press play when you're ready to go over the answer. Okay, here are some possibilities that you could have had. The first and the most important one was breaking it up into unit fractions to make a sum of fractions. So I wrote, if I have seven tenths, then I would like to break it up into one tenth. So I can say one tenth plus one tenth plus one tenth plus one tenth. If I added one tenth up seven times, I would get seven tenths. So that's breaking it up into unit fractions. Then my next one that I did, I did five tenths plus two tenths, that equals seven tenths. My next one that I had was 3 tenths plus 4 tenths, that equals 7 tenths also. Could you have had more different possibilities? Yes, you could have. As long as they equal to 7 tenths, the sum is 7 tenths, then you're fine. Okay, number six is the same thing. Write the fraction as a sum of fractions three different ways. So if you have six six, you're gonna have to break it up into a sum of fractions and you're gonna need to write it three different ways for me. So go ahead, work on that, press play when you're ready to go over the answer. Okay, here are the different ways that I came up with to make sum of fractions for 6 6. Now you could have came up with different ways. As long as they add up to 6 6, you're fine. So I just broke mine up into unit fractions and I added up 1 6 6 times and I got 6 6. My next one I did 3 6 plus 3 6, that equals 6 6. Then I added for my last one 2 6 plus 1 6 plus 3 6 and that gave me 6 6 also. As long as you had something that added up to 6 6, you were good. Okay, let's look at number 7 in your problem solving section. It says Miguel's teacher asks him to color 4 eighths of the grid. He must use three colors, red, blue, and green. There must be more green sections than red sections. How can Miguel color the sections of his grid to follow all the rules? So I want you to go ahead and work on number seven on your own and press pause while you're working on it. Press play whenever you're ready to go over the answer. Okay, let's go over our answer. So I had to make sure that I shaded in four eighths, which is also equal to one half of the grid. He had to use the three colors, red, blue, and green. And there had to be more green sections than red sections. And it had to equal to four eighths. So what I did was I shaded in one red, one blue, because I had to use those two colors, which was one eighth plus one eighth. Then I had to shade in the rest two eighths, green, and I have more green than red. So one eighth plus two, one eighth plus two eighths equals four eighths. Okay, let's look at number eight. It says Petra is asked to color six sixths of her grid. So basically one whole. She must use three colors, blue, red, and pink. 
there must be more blue sections than red and pink sections. What are the different ways Petra can color the sections of her grid and follow all these rules? So I want you to try this problem out on your own. Now there could be different, many different answers, but just as long as we equal 6-6, six, six, then we'll be okay. So go ahead and work this out. Press play when you're ready to go over the answer. Okay, let's go over our answer. So my rules were that I needed to use three colors, blue, red, and pink. I needed to to shade in six six of the grid, which would be the whole grid. And I had to have more blue than red or pink sections. So one possibility could have been, I could have done one of the six pieces pink, one of the six pieces red, and the other four pieces, I could have done them blue. Did I follow the rules? Yes. So I could have said, well, that's one, two, three, four, four sixths, plus my pink was one six, plus my red was another one six. And that equals six six. Let's look at another possibility. I could have done three sixths blue, and I could have done two sixths red and one sixth pink. Do they all add up to six six? Yes, they do. Do I have more blue than red or pink? Yes, I do. Here's one more possibility. Okay, here's another possibility. We could have had our three six that are blue. Then we could have had our plus our two six that were pink and our one six that was red. As long as it added up to six six and we had more blue sections than red or pink sections, we followed the rules. Okay, here are your Quillenberg questions for tonight on page 136 in your Go Math book. For number one, please pay attention and make sure you understand that it's asking for the sum of unit fractions. So make sure you're paying attention to that word unit fractions. Then come and work on number two. Also, you need to work on the rest of the questions on page 136. Make sure to assess yourself and I will see you tomorrow in class. Bye!